Hey everyone, how's it going? So Rhyhorn is kind of interesting because in a lot of ways it's very similar to Geodude, which we did many years ago at this point. In terms of pure base stats, I think Rhyhorn is a little better, especially because it's just slightly faster and speed is so important. But in terms of moves, I think Geodude has a slight advantage, although with TMs, they both end up being pretty good. The one big difference, however, between the two is Rhyhorn's lack of buff move. It doesn't have defense curl or harden like Geodude does, and thus it can't badge boost on its own, which could be a problem. Hopefully not. So that's the situation. Having said that, none of this matters for Brock. What's going to matter for Brock is how much damage can we do to his rock Pokemon. So our first battle with Brock, we're at level 10, and we only have Horn Attack, but because Horn Attack is a much more powerful move than Tackle, we're doing pretty good damage. Now, because we're also Rock type, Tackle from Geodude doesn't do much, but we're not going to get many critical hits, and we're going to have to fast forward, but we are going to win. Onyx is going to be a little trickier, especially with Bide, and we do pretty decent damage to it, but we don't come all that close to knocking it out. That battle took a really long time, so it's more efficient to just level up in the forest. I've already defeated all the trainers, including Rival 1A, and this is a good time to mention that like Tentacool, Rhyhorn is in the slow level up group, which is very unfortunate and is probably going to make Brock a much bigger pain. However, the more powerful Horn Attack could potentially make up for that. Also, because Rhyhorn is intended to be caught later in the game, it doesn't learn any useful level up moves early, or frankly, any level up moves at all. We try again at level 12, and frankly, the battle doesn't go too, too much differently. We make it to Onyx with 27 HP, and we do roughly the same amount of damage. Also, notice the issue is we run out of horn attacks, and once we start using Struggle, we're going to lose at least one HP every single turn. So it looks like we're going to have to level up a lot more, right? Well, take a look at this battle. So we're doing a lot more damage before Defense Curl, and we make it to Onyx with 39 HP. Screech kind of sucks, but we actually do a lot of damage to Onyx as we slowly lose all our power points for Horn Attack. Had we got another critical hit, we may have actually won. It is so close, but unfortunately after Bide hits, we just simply did not have enough HP to survive Recoil, and I think Onyx is on 1, 2, or maybe 3 HP maximum. So this battle is 100% winnable with good luck. The question is, is the luck so extreme that it doesn't actually make a lot of sense? The answer to that would be no. And we are showing you the victorious battle, but there were five other battles that got equally as close within an HP or two of knocking out Onyx. Ideally, although it doesn't really happen here, you want to get a bunch of crits against Geodude because that will preserve power points and more power points means less struggle. Less struggle means less recoil damage, which means more HP. You also really don't want to see Bide. It is by far Onyx's best attack. You just want to see tackle after tackle after tackle. And Screech is pretty bad too because those tackles will start to do more damage, unless Onyx is just going to keep using Screech. Bide plus Struggle really starts to take away HP as each Bide will do double the damage you do, so sometimes around 8 HP. But thankfully, we get really good luck. Because of Rhyhorn's good HP, we still have three remaining, and at level 13, we were able to defeat Onyx. Although, in terms of in-game time and real-time, this still did take a lot longer than I'd like. However, it still did perform a lot better than other Pokémon in the Slow Experience group that only had normal moves. Now, getting to Cerulean City, obviously Misty is going to be tough. We know this. So we're going to battle Rival 2 first. We might as well battle Misty with as much HP as possible, and thankfully, Rhyhorn can learn Dig, which in this generation, as you recall, or don't, is base 100 power. So it's essentially like getting Earthquake before you even battle the second gym, 
which should help so long as we outspeed, which we probably won't. Anyway, we can talk about Misty later. Let's go first deal with Rival 2. As always, Rival 2 leads with Pidgeotto, and we don't want to see Sand Attack. Thankfully, we get three attacks, and that probably means we win. It's not guaranteed because there is a water or grass Pokemon, and I chose the grass Pokemon, Bulbasaur. Why? Well, you'll see later, but trust me, I made it way harder on myself by having Bulbasaur be the starter. We win on our first try, not too bad, but Misty's going to be a heck of a lot tougher, and very likely what's going to have to happen is we're going to have to come back, and that means we're not going to be able to battle Surge right away, which is going to waste time because we can't use Fly right away. So it's unfortunate, but that's kind of the nature of using a type that Misty is good against, especially because she has good AI, and thus will always go for water moves. I think she might be able to go for X Defend, but yeah, this is going to be tough. As we talked about, I did get the TM for Dig, and Water Gun outspeeds, doesn't one-shot, and then Starmie just uses Water Gun. This was hardly surprising, but I figured it was worth an attempt just to see if Staryu outsped, which it did. At the very least, we're going to have to outspeed Staryu, and then hopefully get Water Gun from Starmie, which we're going to probably have to survive. That might require a bunch of leveling up, we will get the TM for Body Slam. I feel like we haven't used that a lot lately. Great move. And we're going to battle Rival 3 first. I don't know if that's going to be enough to defeat Misty. It sucks that we cannot battle Lieutenant Surge first, who would be an absolute cakewalk. But that's just the nature of HMs. Hold on, actually. We're going to teach Body Slam, but you know what? We're definitely not going to be able to beat Misty. Might as well. These trainers disappear. I think it's time to battle trainers in SSN. This is not a fully evolved Pokemon. This is not going to be setting any speedrun records. I think the best and most time efficient thing to do, whoops, nothing in this room, is to, nope, nothing in here either. This is the guy I was trying to battle. Anywho, it's to battle these trainers, very easy to defeat. They will outspeed, so it might take multiple turns, but we're going to gain a lot of levels, and that is likely going to be necessary if we even have a chance at Misty. If we just battled Rival 3, which is what we normally do, we normally ignore all these trainers, no shot we would outspeed and no shot we would win. So I'm actually thinking the strategy is quite good. Sometimes you need to spend time to save time. That is an expression that doesn't exist, but now it does. By J. Rose, quote master. Anyway, now I actually will show the Rival 3 battle because these battles are boring and the Rival 3 battle also boring. Rival 3, like Rival 2, leads with Pidgeotto. You, again, don't want to see any sand attacks. We don't get it. We get a retroactive potion. You can see I don't have a lot of power points left because we've battled a lot of trainers. We still do have a bunch of power points for Horn Attack, and Ivysaur, thankfully, goes for Leech Seed as opposed to Vine Whip. I think Vine Whip would have been fine, but yeah, we have very, very few power points left. The reason you don't want to heal in the Pokemon Center is you can dig back to Cerulean, which is where we need to go anyway, so it would cut down on travel time. That does mean, though, I can't go to Route 11 and battle the trainers there. So I'm going to have to think about that. I also have trainers down here that I didn't battle yet. Uh, this guy's not a trainer, but maybe I will want to heal in the Pokemon Center. I'm going to think about it. In the meantime, let me battle all these trainers. See, Horn Attack didn't do enough. This is why you should heal. Anyway, we're going to skip this part. I'm going to have to decide an efficient way to do that. And we're going to pick this back up in Cerulean, battling Misty, having beaten all the trainers on the SSN. And, wow, that crit sucks. And all the trainers on Route 11. And I didn't even have to narrate that battle. Such a quick reset. Anyway, here comes Staryu, Water Gun, another crit. I think we might be able to tank two Water Guns as long as they don't crit. I want to see if that's the case. So I'm at level 31. A third consecutive critical hit. I feel like there is a glitch. How is this happening? Let's go. Star U, X defend. Okay, that works. Hopefully it's a one shot. It is. Star me, bubble beam. <laughs> okay. All right. Eventually we'll get a battle without a critical hit. Uh, statistically likely, it eventually will happen. <laughs> Not gonna be this battle, but one of the battle. 
<laughs> okay, okay. We're gonna get one without a crit. I promise. We're gonna... Alright, X defend. Dig. Perfect. And now star me, water gun. Alright, I don't think we would have survived if star you used water gun. But you know what? After five consecutive or six, whatever, critical hits, I'll take that victory. I'll take that victory for sure. Alright, so now we have a choice. I could go to rock tunnel but there is something i'm actually a little concerned about we have the far fetch because we actually don't need paris in this run since rhyhorn is going to use dig do we outspeed all these pokemon because if we don't okay we do they could be pretty tough with their grass moves so i'm going to save surge for later even though we could easily defeat lieutenant surge the only reason i'd go back and beat him is if we need to level up to beat any of the trainers coming up, and I just can't see that. So we're probably gonna pick this back up in Celadon City, battling Giovanni number one. I'm not even sure why I narrate this battle, because it's really easy. I mean, it's been difficult a couple times. I guess just because Team Rocket's like an essential part of the story, it doesn't usually provide much difficulty, and three digs, oh, my mistake. Three digs and a body slam later. We're at level 35. We don't need Tail Whip. We have defeated Giovanni. And don't forget the Silph Scope. Did that in a run recently. And now we gotta decide what we're gonna do next. Erica's gonna be really, really tough. So we're gonna skip her probably until the very end. So we outspeed all our Pokemon. I'm gonna get Fly. And then that means to use Fly, we need to beat Lieutenant Surge. So that's gonna be easy. Let's quickly pick it up in Vermilion. We have to walk all the way there, which sucks. After we do a quick shopping, of course. Surge is going to lead off with his Voltorb. We're going to go for Body Slam, and it one-shots. We're going to go for Body Slam, but after Growl, we probably won't one-shot Raichu. So I'm just going to go for Dig, and Raichu can do nothing. This was completely and totally not a problem. <laughs> I mean, in games where Raichu would have Surf, that would be pretty difficult, for sure, and... I think there's a later game where Raichu actually does get Surf, maybe in Let's Go. I don't know if I'm misremembering, but certainly that's not the game we're playing right now. We actually, I've talked so long, I don't even have to skip ahead to Rival 4. And notice here why I picked Bulbasaur. Gyarados at level 23 knows Hydro Pump, and if it hits, it outspeeds and thus one-shots Rhyhorn. Now, Rock Slide we get from the Celadon Mart. So we will one-shot Pidgeotto and eventually Gyarados. However, I am paused on the title screen because I'm not really sure what to do here. We need to outspeed Gyarados and we only have 40 speed. Gyarados has quite a lot more than that. So my question is, do I hope for a Hydro Pump miss? Or do we try and level up more? Don't forget, we can't go to Sylph Company. I just illustrated that right there. You need to defeat the Pokemon Tower before you can go to Sylph Company, and Celadon Gym is not a really good place to go. So it looks like we're going to hope for that slim 20% chance that Hydro Pump actually misses, which is not really a fun strategy to use, especially this early. I really don't love when it's like, yeah, this move one-shots, but we're just going to hope it misses. I mean, to be fair, I guess if they wanted a move that didn't miss, they wouldn't have given Gyarados Hydro Pump. And I guess we could level up versus the trainers all around Lavender Town. I don't know. Badge boost would have been super useful. There's the miss, and we knock out Gyarados. If we had badge boost, we could just use Harden or whatever versus Pidgeotto, and then easily, easily knock out the rest of Rival Force Pokemon. We even outspeed the Ivysaur. Yeah, I'm not thrilled that I had to do that, but it probably was the most time efficient. I hate to say, even if I was optimizing these runs, not for in-game time, but for real time, that probably still would be the fastest strategy. Battle again and again until you get the 1 in 5 miss. I think battling all the trainers that don't have really great Pokemon, and there aren't even that many left, other than the Fighting Dojo, which could be kind of difficult. Yeah, I think we made the right call. Anyway, this is actually kind of a reverse of a lot of other runs where we get by Rival 4 and I'm like, oh no, what are we going to do next? Because often the choice between Koga or Rival 5 is really tough 
and it's really hard for some of our pre-evolved Pokemon to get by them. Not the case for Rhyhorn, Koga should be an absolute joke, so we're obviously going to battle him next. One slight problem. I was having a little bit of trouble with the jugglers in Koga's gym, and thus I decided to go to Cycling Road and battle all these trainers. Now, to be honest, this is also for rival Fival and Sabrina. Because of our typing, we should one-shot these Pokemon. Unfortunately, Body Slam just doesn't quite one-shot, which is not great. It would save a lot of time if it did, but you kind of have to get a feel for when a good level up section is. We already had our first level up section before Misty. Before Koga seems kind of funny, a little bit unnecessary, but it should help and we're here now already. So why postpone this? It just makes sense to level up right now against these fairly easy trainers, of which there are a lot of. I also battled all the trainers in Koga's gym, which explains why we're poisoned here. Thankfully, we're going to be getting Earthquake rather soon, so we don't have to rely on two-turn dig. We can get it as soon as we enter Sylph Company and head to the 10th floor. That means I have to rely on dig, which is bad because I'm poisoned, but because we one-shot every one of Koga's Pokemon, it's fine. I could have gone Earthquake already, but it just doesn't seem like it's a good idea to go back and forth. And you see, I'm going to save here because I'm going to try Rival Fievel, but I think it's going to be a fairly easy victory for Gyarados again. And thus, I do have an idea of what I'd like to do. And that means doing things in an order that we almost never do, but will probably work out for Rhyhorn. I think we've only done this one time, but let me first see if this is even necessary, because generally speaking, this order does waste a little bit of time. As you can see, I've battled a lot of trainers in Sylph Company. I'm at level 46. So I really tried to avoid doing what we might go ahead and do, but to no avail. Gyarados still outspeeds, Gyarados still one-shots, and after Gyarados, there is Venusaur this time. And Venusaur probably outspeeds and will definitely one-shot with Razor Leaf. Now, we do level up right after Sand Attack, Meaning I can't tell if I would outspeed with a badge boost, but Gyarados misses. And so is this going to be the victory we wanted? Rock Slide only has 90 accuracy, so it's going to miss a bunch. But we have thankfully made it to Venusaur, which uses Razor Leaf and one-shots me. And this was exactly what I was concerned about. We can reset for the second Pokemon and see, hmm, do we get the 1 in 5 miss and then automatically win? With an Ivysaur with Rival 4, it worked. But with Venusaur, which gets an automatic crit, pretty much, every time it uses Razor Leaf, simply not realistic. And thus, we're going to have to do the very bad, very out-of-the-way order that we need to have beaten Koga to do. We're going to head back to Celadon and get Eevee, and we're going to use a Water Stone to evolve it into Vaporeon. Once we have Vaporeon, we can then remember, oh yeah, I didn't battle Erica yet. Maybe I want to do that. And thankfully, we outspeed at least Bellsprout and we outspeed Weepin' Bell. So we should be able to beat all the trainers in this gym. I don't know if we're going to be able to beat Erica, but we're already here. So might as well try. So Erica leads with Victory Bell. Victory Bell is pretty scary, but we outspeed with Dig. I still haven't taught Earthquake yet because I forgot it. That is just a mistake. Rock Slide one-shots Tangela, and then Dig one-shots Vileplume. Not bad. So we waited to the perfect time to beat Erica. This is almost definitely not enough to defeat Rival Fievel, and we already have Vaporeon. So there's no use going in the regular fastest order. We're going to fly to Pallet Town, and since we have a Pokemon capable of Surf, and we have Surf, and we've beaten Koga so we can use Surf, we can Surf and defeat Blaine. And although there aren't a ton of trainers around Cinnabar, or at least trainers we want to fight because they have water Pokemon, the ones in Blaine's gym, on the other hand, they all have fire Pokemon that give a lot of XP that will be defeated relatively easily. So we should definitely battle them, and then obviously battle Blaine. I don't anticipate Blaine being very difficult. We're just going to use Dig a bunch of times. We could get outsped. I mean, we will get outsped, but it's not a big deal. We can also use Rock Slide. Unfortunately, Against our canine, we do, we miss a couple times, and then we don't one-shot, which was very irritating, but it was, as I predicted, a fairly easy victory. 
Fire Blast, I think it can use it because all its moves are not very effective. But it wouldn't have done too, too much damage. And now what we really have to do, because we have defeated Erica, we have defeated Blaine, we have to defeat Rival Fievel. We have done literally everything else. Oh, I forgot to battle this rocket. We have done everything else we could possibly do other than get Earthquake, which I keep forgetting to do. Go get Earthquake, Jaros. Nope. Anyway, we'll go battle Rival Fievel. Eh, it'll be fine. Hopefully. Okay, Rival Fievel leads with Pidgeot. We don't outspeed still, but this is the moment of truth. Gyarados, we outspeed. Now, I think we're fine. We can Rock Slide Growlithe. Alakazam goes for Confusion. It gets a crit. We go for Body Slam. And we're not fine. We're not fine. Hmm. Hmm. What do I do now? I mean, the only thing I really can do is battle the remaining trainers in Sylph Company, try to get a little more speed to outspeed Venusaur. If we outspeed Gyarados, we're probably fairly close to outspeeding Venusaur, and that's just going to be what I think we have to do. Once we outspeed Venusaur, the battle will be a joke, but it's really unfortunate at level 51, we still don't outspeed Venusaur. How many levels will it take to outspeed Venusaur? Thankfully, I was able to look it up and determined it was just one level. We didn't even have to level up to level 52, we just have to level up to 52 prior to Venusaur. So the battle's gonna go exactly like you saw before, or pretty much. But this time we just outspeed Venusaur. Easy victory. I actually think it was a speed tie before, but now it's a speed win. And I can show the Giovanni 2 battle. There really isn't all that much left aside from getting Earthquake finally. But what we're gonna do after we do that is fight Sabrina, Giovanni, and then the end of the game. It's kind of funny how we've pretty much done everything else we need to do right before Sabrina. So if Sabrina proves to be really difficult, that would be really unfortunate. But I'm hoping although my special is bad and my speed is bad, we're able to one-shot our Pokemon so they shouldn't be too, too terrible. But there's only one way to find out. Sabrina leads with everyone's favorite Pokemon, Kadabra. And we don't outspeed, but Psybeam doesn't do all that much. We actually do outspeed Mr. Mime, not Venomoth, but Stun Spore misses, which is super lucky. Psybeam doesn't knock me out. And all right, we have finally used our last dig. I, again, probably should have deleted Stomp. Didn't really need it. There was something I was planning with Stomp, but didn't end up working out. And now we can just simply delete Dig for Earthquake and we can go beat Giovanni really easily. Can also PowerPoint up Earthquake, so I have 12 PowerPoints because frankly, why am I gonna use anything else? And yeah, let's go quickly beat Giovanni number three. Alrighty, Giovanni number three leads with Rhyhorn. We're just gonna go for Earthquake, knock it out. Dugtrio probably will outspeed. Unfortunately, Earthquake does not hit Dig and you can use Guard Spec during the invulnerable turn of Dig, which is annoying. Still, doesn't knock me out or come even close to knocking me out. And we outspeed and one-shot everything but Rhydon, which goes for Fissure, which doesn't affect me because I am both faster and at a higher level. So all the conditions for 1-hit KO moves that have existed don't apply to me. So that's great. Okay, now we have just six battles left. Rival six and the Elite Four. The Elite Four are going to be very difficult because of Laurelee and the Champion. Rival 6 should be similar to Rival 5 but I have an idea to make it even easier. This won't work in the Champion battle, but we can use Mimic to gain speed. And if we gain speed, we don't even have to think about badge boost because our attack is so good to start with. Simply outspeeding should be enough. So Pidgeot has to go for agility because all its other moves are quote unquote, not very effective. I'm gonna go for Rock Slide here because I level up. And since I level up here, I can use two more agilities plus that Tail Whip to get not just more speed, but a little bit more attack. It's not enough to knock out Gyarados. So yeah, that was probably a bad call to go for Body Slam there. Had I gone for Rock Slide, we would have been good. 
Not really sure why I had to try, but hey, now we know a body slam with three badge boosts isn't enough. So I'm not going to use any agilities. I'm going to actually wait till I beat Pidgeot. There's no need to outspeed it. And then I go for all three agilities. So once again, I get three badge boosts. I go for body slam. I'm looking for tail whip. And then I decide I think we're fine. I'm going to go for rock slide on Gyarados. I'm going to go for earthquake on Growlithe. We will outspeed and one shot Alakazam. And the question was, do we one shot Venusaur? The answer is no. And you can see now why I was trying to go for that tail whip and so concerned with badge boots. If we don't one shot Venusaur, it's Razor Leaf crits, meaning it ignores my badge boots. If it didn't, we would win easily. But it does ignore the badge boost because it's a critical hit. And I'm not sure if... Hmm... I'm not sure. Let me try to get one more badge boost with Rhyhorn. I can just keep going for agility. If it goes for Tail Whip... Oh, there it failed. It failed again. And... Oh, God. I used up all my agilities. Now I gotta go for Body Slam. And I've gotten two failed Tail Whips. I have to reset. So, I think one Tail Whip should give me enough power to knock out the Venusaur. Man, Gen 1's so weird. But, in seriousness, it using Tail Whip does raise my attack. And that should be enough, that 12.5% should be enough for... I hope so. Okay, there it is. So we have four badge boosts. So, uh, should I try for one more? Eh. Alright, let's see if this is enough. If not, we can go for five badge boosts. Definitely a possibility here. Okay, so we have 172 HP. So we're pretty much at full HP. Ah, come on! All right, that may have been a range, but five badge boosts it is. We know for a fact that will be enough. But you know what? After a few more failed attempts, I realized, hey, Laurelie's probably going to be pretty difficult. Let's just go fight the Fighting Dojo. We'll level up, and that level up with the four badge boosts, three agility plus a tail whip, should be enough to knock out Venusaur, and it's going to help for later in the game. So I'm going to go quickly do that, and then battle Rival 6 once again. All right, so you know the drill here. We're going to mimic agility. We're at level 55 now. We still have rare candies we can use, but the reason I save those rare candies is I have the trainers. I don't have much to say about this battle. We're going to win. And we got one tail whip. All right, well, now we get the additional tail whip we needed, so the leveling up was seemingly too much, but it doesn't really matter. And it ties very well into why I don't use the rare candies here. To prepare for the Elite Four, we're going to battle everyone we can in Victory Road. Just because of how experience points work. And this is why I like the candies in later games that just give set amounts of experience points. Because with rare candies, since they just bring you to the next level, and it takes an increasing number of experience points to get from level to level, you want to maximize the amount of experience points the rare candies give you. I was actually recently asked what my favorite innovation in later Pokemon is that I would bring to Gen 1 to make my runs easier. And definitely having those experience candies as opposed to rare candies would be kind of nice, but hey, it is what it is and I love Gen 1 the way it is. I wouldn't give up those 1 in 256 misses for anything. Foreshadowing. No, I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen. The Elite Four are going to be really, really annoying because Laurelie has water Pokemon and... Agatha is terrible, and Lance has a Gyarados. Should be great. All right, Laurelie leads with Dugong. We have used all the rare candies. We're at level 72, and thus we outspeed and knock it out. We also outspeed and knock out Cloyster. This is really important. Now, against Slowbro, I decide to be a little tricky trickster here and keep going for withdraw to up my stats. I should have just gone for Amnesia, and it almost cost me... But thankfully, I get up three, and that means I'm going to outspeed Jinx and one-shot Lapras. So, yeah, probably just go for Amnesia. It's safer. But it didn't cost me, so whatever. Bruno isn't that difficult, but I am Rock. Fighting is super effective. We'll one-shot Onyx. That's fine. Hitmonchan, we outspeed in one-shot. 
but Hitmonlee goes for Jump Kick and does a ton with a critical hit. Now out comes Onyx, and here's the moment of truth. Do we one-shot Machamp? We don't. And if submission that it used had hit, I think we would have lost to Bruno, which is interesting. Anyway, now we have to deal with Agatha. We one-shot all her Pokemon, but she will get one turn to attack because she outspeeds. So Confuse Ray, I hit myself in Confusion. Withdraw, well I miss, or it doesn't affect it because, you know, it's a flying type. Anyway, I am able to knock out the Golbat the next turn with a Rock Slide. I'm still confused, however. Just keep that in mind, but I think I'm going to snap out of it. It uses Confuse Ray. I do snap out of it. Now Haunter confuses me again, but I hit through it. Arbok I outspeed, and I've snapped out of Confusion, and then Gengar goes for Toxic. So far, so good, but you notice my voice isn't that excited, and the reason is simple. This whole run comes down to whether or not I can outspeed this Gyarados. The answer is no, then the run is over and I'm not going to reset for a 20% chance. The answer is yes, well we got a good shot of winning. The answer was no. Alright, so let's figure out exactly how fast Gyarados is to figure out if we outspeed. Thankfully this is really easy. Every single Pokemon in Generation 1 has 9 DVs in attack and 8 DVs in every other stat with no stat experience. We can plug that in and we find out that Gyarados has exactly 108 speed. Now it went by pretty fast, but here's a screenshot. During the Agatha battle, I leveled up to level 73 and I have 96 speed. So you might think, oh, we need 8 more speed, that's going to be really difficult with only base 25 speed. That might take 8 more levels or something. But you'd be wrong, we're actually a lot closer than you think due to badge boosts. You see, badge boosts are not included in that 96 you see. Every time I start battle, there is a 12.5% increase rounded down. So what does that mean? It means it was a speed tie. Wonderful. I decided to go and level up one more time to break the speed tie. There's another Gyarados coming up, but I have a plan for it. I may, may have also miscalculated and thought I only had 107 speed. So that's also why I leveled up, because I thought it wasn't a speed tie, I just got outsped. Whoops. But it's not a bad thing to do. It should just help us, and it's not going to take too long. After leveling up in my very first attempt, and don't forget, I save before I use the rare candy. So we're at level 74. We outspeed and one-shot Gyarados. We outspeed and one-shot Dragonair. We outspeed and one-shot Dragonair number two. And then Aerodactyl Hyper Beam misses. Then I miss. Then it hits with Supersonic, then I hit myself in Confusion, then it hits with Hyper Beam, all of which is very annoying, but thankfully we knock it out. Then Dragonite uses Barrier, which is very annoying, but I get a clutch critical hit. So for the first time, we've made it to the champion, but you might be wondering, j -Rose, you were just able to outspeed a level 58 Gyarados. How can you outspeed the level 61 Gyarados without leveling up more? To find out, let's battle the champion. Alright, so Pidgeot no longer has agility, so we're just going to go for Rock Slide and knock it out immediately. We level up, that's fine. Alakazam goes for Reflect, and we still knock it out, that's actually really good. And here's where I'm going to mimic Horn Drill, but the reason is, there we go, Tail Whip. I actually go for Horn Drill hoping for another badge boost, but of course it hits. And now we outspeed Gyarados, we one-shot. We don't outspeed our canine, and this is what I was scared about. Do we outspeed and one-shot Venusaur? We do. That's it. We win. Easy peasy. Thank you, Badge Boost. You have made this run a lot more consistent than it otherwise would be. This would be very difficult in a game like Generation 3. I think about that a lot, how different some of these Pokemon would be with competent AI and no badge boost glitch. But that's a problem for future Jaros. For current Jaros, Rhyhorn did better than Geodude, surprisingly. Although it's just five base speed more, I mean, that is a, what, 20% increase if my math is correct? That's not insignificant. And it's good power. It really, really worked, even though it was in the slow level up group. 
It's still not an amazing Pokemon. As of now, it's exactly average. 17th overall, right in the middle. I'd say it's in a tier above Geodude, Oddish, and Coughing. I get that the times look similar, but in terms of real time, there's a real divide between these four Pokemon and the next four Pokemon. But yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised how this run went. And thank you guys for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll be back soon with another video. Take care.